Don't miss the latest update on the SpaceX Starbase project. Scheduled for December 29, 2023, the highly anticipated B-10 test is causing quite the frenzy. But wait, there's a plot twist or road closure at Starbase suggests this test may just be the tip of the iceberg. If the B-10 test doesn't go as planned, brace yourselves for the ultimate comeback in early January of 2024. Mark your calendars for January 3rd and 4th, when the Starbase could erupt with mind-blowing activities. Join us as we explore the potential and the excitement of what lies ahead. This is an interstellar adventure you won't want to miss. Let's find out on today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. The SpaceX Starship at Starbase Orbital Launch Site is keeping the excitement alive, ensuring no dull moments. After a quiet Christmas break, things got lively with a vent party at the launch site. The tank farm test included remarkable venting from the newly installed large horizontal tanks. Unutaneously, the orbital launch mount joined the action, actively participating in the activities. The significant purging observed from the liquid oxygen side of the tank farm and the OLM is likely part of a retest for the ground system, addressing issues that led to the static fire scrub of Booster 10 last week. In fact, the Super Heavy Booster 10 has a complex propellant distribution system using cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen. With a unique landing tank connected to the center 13 engines to reduce propellant sloshing. If you aren't already aware, Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines are powered by cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which are the fuel and oxidizer respectively. These propellants are stored in large main tanks and are fed into the engines through a complex series of pipes. Super Heavy also features a liquid oxygen landing or header tank, a smaller isolated reservoir, designated for the landing burn. This tank is specifically connected to only the center 13 Reptor engines, minimizing the effects caused by propellant sloshing within the substantially larger main tank. As per ring watchers, there are a total of 40 valves designated for the outer 20 Reptor engines, 24 liquid methane main tank supply and 24 liquid oxygen main tank supply. Meanwhile, the inner 13 Reptor engines have a total of 39 valves, 13 for liquid methane main tank supply, 13 for liquid oxygen main tank supply and 13 for liquid oxygen landing tank supply. These complexities led SpaceX to encounter challenges with ground support equipment during recent testing. While specifics remain undisclosed, SpaceX continues its efforts to enhance manufacturing capabilities. After the recent vending test, Anticipation builds for Booster 10's upcoming static fire trial. The success of this firing involving 33 engines would mark a triumphant conclusion to SpaceX's 2023 endeavors. Scheduled for December 29 of 2023, a road closure at Starbase hints at potential test activities. Should the B-10 test not proceed as planned, a possibility looms for its return in the early days of January of 2024, specifically on the 3rd and 4th. SpaceX is moving swiftly towards the launch of IFT-3, propelled by the efficient performance of the launch site following IFT-2. The last obstacle in their path appears to be submitting their report to the FAA and securing subsequent approval. Once these tests conclude, the Starship upper stage will likely be assembled atop the booster, finalizing the launch vehicle for Integrated Flight Test 3. The preparations for the third Starship test flights align with the forthcoming Artemis missions, including Artemis II set for a 10-day lunar orbit in November of 2024, as well as Artemis III anticipated to land astronauts near the lunar south pole around 2025. Meanwhile, in the days ahead, we might witness a groundbreaking event, the very first private landing on the moon. The Peregrine Lunar Lander has completed all its launch milestones and has been stacked atop the Vulcan Centaur rocket that will carry it to space on January 8 of 2024. The Astrobotics Peregrine Lunar Lander is expected to attempt a landing on the Moon on February 23 of 2024. The landing will make history as not only is Peregrine Astrobotics' first lander mission, but this is also possibly set to be the first time a private spacecraft has set down on the Moon, pending the progress of other missions as well, such as an intuitive machine's launch of board SpaceX set for no earlier than mid-February. If you've been following the lunar industry, you understand that landing on the moon's surface is incredibly difficult. With that said, our team has continuously surpassed expectations and demonstrated incredible ingenuity during flight reviews, spacecraft testing, and major hardware integrations. 
Astrobotics CEO John Thornton said in a statement from the company, we are ready for launch and for landing. President of ULA Tori Bruno celebrated the final steps toward the launch of the private lunar lander with a stunning time-lapse video shared on his X-feed on December 22. Now, that's what I call a tree topper. Time-lapse of Peregrine Lander being settled atop the Vulcan rocket. Next stop, the moon, he said. Though Peregrine has come through three weeks of important final checks and fueling needed to be achieved prior to launch, there is a whole new set of milestones for the spacecraft to clear after blast-off. These will begin shortly after launch when the lander will separate from its Vulcan rocket carrier and will power on, following which it will establish communication with ground control on Earth. This communication will flow through the NASA Deep Space Network system to the Astrobotics Mission Control Center in Pittsburgh, allowing Peregrine's operators to determine its position, orientation, and operating health. Following this in around 40 minutes after separation, ground control will begin sending commands to the lunar lander's propulsion system. One of the first series of commands will tell the thrusters to reorient, reorientate Peregrine so its energy-harvesting solar panels are directed toward the sun, allowing them to start powering up the spacecraft's battery. The team at Astrobotics will then perform maneuvers in Earth's orbit that prepare Peregrine for insertion into an orbit around the Moon. The spacecraft will maintain a stable lunar orbit, performing system checks before heading for a historic touchdown at the end of February. I have high praise for the professionalism, dedication, and technical expertise demonstrated by the Astrobotic team throughout the complex multi-year Peregrine development program. Peregrine Mission 1 Director Sherrod Bakera said in the statement, Evolving Peregrine from a paper concept to a fully tested spacecraft ready for launch is a remarkable achievement for a small business. From Starship's intricate propellant distribution to Falcon Heavy's imminent launch and the groundbreaking private lunar lander, the space race surges onward. The first significant setback occurred in March 2006, when the Falcon 1 rocket failed to reach orbit. This failure was followed by others, including a Falcon 9 rocket carrying a Dragon spacecraft bound for the International Space Station, breaking apart mid-air in June 2015, and a Falcon Heavy rocket loss in June 2019. These failures were part of the learning curve that SpaceX had to undergo to refine its technology and approach. Musk acknowledged the difficult start stating that the first three launches of the company were failures. The fourth launch, which was crucial for the survival of SpaceX, fortunately succeeded. This success marked a turning point for the company. The recent incident involving the loss of a SpaceX Falcon 9 booster. At sea is indeed a significant event in the realm of space exploration. This booster, notable for its history of 19 successful missions, met an unfortunate end due to harsh sea conditions during its transport back to port following its latest mission. After its successful mission on December 23, where it carried 23 Starlink satellites into orbit, the Falcon 9 booster landed on the drone ship, just read the instructions. This process involves a series of steps that begin immediately after landing. Once the booster touches down on the drone ship, the priority is to ensure its stability. The ship is equipped with mechanisms to secure the booster, preventing it from moving during transit back to port. This is particularly important in maintaining the structural integrity of the rocket during transportation through potentially rough sea conditions. The journey back to the port is a critical phase. The drone ship with the booster on board must navigate the ocean waters, which can be unpredictable. Factors like high winds and turbulent seas can significantly impact the stability of the booster during this transit. As evidenced in the case of this booster, rough sea conditions can pose substantial risks, including the possibility of the rocket toppling over. Upon reaching the port, the booster is carefully offloaded using cranes and other equipment. After offloading, the booster undergoes thorough inspections to assess its condition and determine the feasibility of its reuse. Engineers and technicians examine various components, including the engines and structural elements to ensure everything is functioning correctly and safely. While being transported back to port, it encountered high winds and waves, which caused it to topple over and break in half. This booster has been a notable figure in space flight history, especially for being the only booster adorned with NASA's logos. Despite the recent incident, SpaceX is focused on extracting valuable lessons and data from it.
the company has acknowledged that newer Falcon boosters have been equipped with upgraded landing legs capable of self-leveling to prevent such incidents, a feature that was not present in this booster due to its age. Beyond these improvements, SpaceX has been exploring other advanced landing methods, including the development of a tower to catch rockets, a concept similar to the Mechazilla system designed for the Starship rocket. The Mechazilla, a part of SpaceX's Starship development program, is a tower equipped with mechanical arms designed to catch the Starship and its super-heavy booster as they return to Earth. This method, if successful, would eliminate the need for landing legs entirely and could potentially allow for even quicker turnaround times for rocket reusability. Catching towers could provide a more controlled and stable method of recovering boosters, especially in challenging environmental conditions like high seas. On its final mission, this Falcon booster, which was originally white and had the red NASA logo on it, appeared much darker, almost charcoal in color. This change in color was due to the soot and marks accumulated from its multiple trips to space and back. This change in appearance from its original state shows the harsh conditions of space travel and the booster's repeated reusability. When a negative event occurs, it's common for people to forget. The past successes. This seems to be the case with SpaceX's Falcon 9 booster. Despite its recent mishap, the booster had an impressive track record, successfully landing back on Earth 18 times prior to its final mission. This achievement is particularly noteworthy, as no other booster in the history of spaceflight has matched this level of reusability. For context, even the Space Shuttle, renowned for its reusability, had a different approach. The shuttle's solid rocket boosters were recovered and reused, but each mission required a new orbiter vehicle. Moreover, the orbiters themselves, though reusable, needed extensive refurbishment between flights and weren't used as frequently. As B-1058 Despite the loss of this booster, its legacy remained strong. In its career, it launched two astronauts and over 860 satellites, carrying more than 260 metric tons into space over approximately three and a half years. While the Falcon family of rockets, including the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, currently forms the backbone of SpaceX's launch capabilities. The company's attention is increasingly turning towards the Starship rocket. The Starship rocket is designed to be larger and more powerful than any rocket that has previously been launched. This increased size and power are crucial for SpaceX's plans, as the Starship is intended to carry out a wide range of missions, including sending large payloads to Earth orbit, the Moon, and even Mars. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.